And welcome back to the Over 40s Fitness Podcast. My name is Tristan Lowe, and here we are now, uh, the second week in November 2024. And the subject of today's uh, short talk is flexibility. Become flexible. Okay, now, flexible, let's start from the top. What I'd like to do is um, start the podcast by reading uh, a short insert from one of my study books about flexibility uh, and stretching. Here we go. Uh, There are a number of definitions that can be used when referring to flexibility. A measure of range of uh, motion, excuse me, ROM, available at a joint or a group of joints. The ability to move the joints in the needed range of motion demanded by the sport or the ability to readily adapt and change in positions and alignment may be expressed as normal, limited, or excessive. Let's look at the benefits of uh, being flexible or flexibility. Increased range of motion, a reduced muscle tension, and increased physical and mental uh, relaxation, reduced risk of joint sprains or muscle strains, reduced risk of uh, back problems, a decreased muscular soreness associated with activities, decreased muscle Uh, viscosity, um, causing contractions to be easier and smoother, Uh, improved coordination and allowing for greater ease of movement, improvement and development of your your body's own uh, body awareness, improved capability for circulation, blood circulation and uh, exchange of air and improved um, posture. Now, uh, the reason that, um, that as a personal trainer and sports massage therapist, I understand from my own benefits and for those of clients past and present, the benefits of flexibility. Um, Become flexible is something we can all do. Uh, Whether we're as flexible as an Olympic gymnast, you know, or a dancer um, is one thing, or professional athlete, but we can become more flexible on a daily basis. Uh, Now the best form of uh, uh, measurement to become uh, becoming more flexible is can you, can you, uh, can you, pick up something off the floor easier? Can you get off the floor easier? Can you get off your couch easier? Um, Is your range of movement at the shoulder and the arm and the back and the hip better than it was the week before? Um, Now there will be scientific measurements to prove this. Uh, We we use them in our line of work in terms of um, not so much scientific but in terms of on the spot. We use sit and reach tests. Uh, We use essentially a, a, a metal box with uh, some measurements written out on it, like a big ruler essentially, and a client will sit and put their feet against the sit and reach test box, feet flat to the uh, the box, legs flat to the floor, and they'll be sat at a 90 degree bend at the hip um, from a cold position, and slide the little ruler down on top of the box and see how far they can slide um, the marker down in the box from anything from one centimeter to 60 centimeters, something like that. And of course, that gives us an idea, the flexibility, the range of movement available at the hamstrings and the hips, or even the lumbar spine, the lower back. Um, Now that's an eye test really, but of course the client will know um, because they can see a marker. And if a month later with uh, flexibility training, they can move that marker under uh, under the same variables each time from cold, feet flat, no shoes on, just the socks on, they've got an improvement, they've got a visual marker, but the, probably the be- the, a better one than that would be they can actually, they feel more flexible. You've got less back pain in the morning. You've got less um, uh, hip pain. You know, you're, if you work at a desk all day in an office, the probability is masses and spaces. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, the mass would be the head, the space would be the neck, okay? Your head, which weighs up to a stone, is gonna pull forward when you're working at a computer screen or a desktop all day or your laptop or your, even off your phone, irrespective of your height and your build, the head is still a weight and it's gonna pull forward and give you, give you curvature of the spine, starting from the neck. Yep, some people call it text neck, you know, for obvious reasons. People spend all day walking around, looking at mobile phones, texting their friends and family, but without looking up. You know, when you go to the big cities around the world, they always say, look up. Yeah, um, that's where you see what the structures are really like, not at the bottom, not where all your, your, uh, all your franchises are. Look at the buildings, look at the top there. If you're in London, Paris, Vienna, Rome, somewhere like that, you're gonna see the old structures. If you're in modern cities, you know, New York, Chicago, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Tokyo, you're gonna see all the modern uh, masterpieces that they've built with modern engineering. So look up, and if you've got poor flexibility, you're probably gonna be less likely to look up because it takes a range of movement in the shoulders and the back and the spine, the thoracic spine, the cervical spine, the lumbar spine, to lean back and look up. 
as long as you don't get a, an impingement in the vertebral artery, which would cause you to pass out. So you need flexibility. You need flexibility to drive your car, uh, to play golf, to lift weights, to do your profession where you could be a, um, a joiner, a plumber, a sparky, um, you could be a builder, you know, even someone that works in a coffee shop, you're gonna need some range of movement or flexibility to get to the floor, to pick up the stock that gets delivered and, and to move around freely. And actually, um, there's physiological uh, evidence to show that uh, women or girls uh, are uh, generally, um, all things being equal, which they're not when it comes to the body, they have got uh, a better um, flexibility uh, ratio or marker. And the reason being, um, early stage life or during uh, pregnancy or pre-pregnancy, um, their bodies release a hormone called elastin. And that hormone, elastin, floods through the body. You know, it's systemic and it'll actually increase um, how, how much they're relaxed by. They, can, they are physiologically more relaxed with the hormone elastin, which is unique to women um, during pre or, or or pregnancy itself to prepare them um, to, uh, to house a baby. Um, I once read an article, and how true this was, I don't know. So um, feel free to quote me on this, but I'm quoting uh, an article that I read about, I don't know, I don't know, maybe 16, 17 years ago, I can't remember. And it was about uh, the Olympic Games. I think it was 90, uh, late 70s, early 80s, and how the women Russian athletes were winning um, a high amount of uh, events, especially in the gymnastics, the young, the young athletes, young women athletes. And they were the age of, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, even right up until early 20s. And of course, at that time, some of the Russian athletes um, were the best in the world uh, in, in gymnastics, and they probably still are now, but we're talking about late 70s, early 80s. And what happened was they were winning gold medals. Worst case scenario, they were winning silver medals, I think, and um, there was a high rate of um, uh, abortions that were being, um, that were being t uh, carried out by some of these uh, women athletes when they got back home or post, uh, post uh, event, whether that was done uh, in the country where the Olympics were held, but it was certainly done when they got back to home to Russia. And uh, the article raised an eyebrow that, the, um, that these athletes, these women athletes, uh, the Russian uh, girls or young women were being uh, getting deliberately pregnant um, at, at a specific time during their pre-Olympic Games uh, preparation to release that hormone of elastin into the body to make them more flexible with the idea that it would relax them, physiologically and mentally relax them to compete at the very best level, at the highest as an athlete in the Olympic Games in gymnastics. And then as soon as the event was over, whether they won the gold, silver or bronze or not, whether they placed on the podium or not, and quite often they were on it, uh, they would have an abortion um, because they had no intentions of having the child. I read that article, I think I read it in about 07, maybe 2008, and it was quite alarming. And I think what I might do is try and research where I found the article to talk about that another day. So um, this may have been backed by an American or a European um, you know, funding uh, or research, but, uh, but, but certainly um, that was a story that I thought, wow, if that's true, why is that not spoken about today? So that's the extreme sample, examples, excuse me, of trying to become more flexible. Don't, I'm not suggesting that whatsoever, irrespective of what country in the world you're from. But become more flexible, so um, that reduces the risk of injury in the body, okay? And it also uh, increases your probability of recovering from an injury quicker, you know, work-related injury, sports or in, uh, injury, repetitive strain, if you're more flexible. And of course, if you're more flexible as well, posture, it's, re it's really good for your posture. I'm six feet four, um, and so poor posture would be quite easy to see on me. You know, I've got long arms and legs, thin bone, and at six feet four and age 53, poor posture would be quite easy to see on me. But at the moment, my posture is okay because I work out a lot, I fl you know, I do my stretches, and my flexibility work. Yes, my flexibility can be better. I've had sports injuries throughout my life, which can take a toll on the body. But ordinarily for 53, nearly 54, my flexibility is okay. Uh, but it could be better. Age comes into, um, so you've got, you've got gender, male or female, you've got age that comes into it. And let's look at some other factors 
that affect uh, your uh, flexibility. Okay, temperature. Okay, and that would be um, outside body and inside body temperature. Okay, uh, an increase in temperature due to either direct heat or the weather can increase the range of motion and elasticity of muscle and tendons. Conversely, a decrease in temperature, i.e. cooling down, can result in a decrease in flexibility as much as 20%. And to give you um, an easy uh, idea about that, uh, wait till December, January, February, the, probably the coldest months of the year, and when you get up in the morning or when you go out, you're gonna have less flexibility. You turn up with your, your personal trainer or your therapist, you go to your gym or your sports field, and you're gonna be colder. The muscles are gonna be colder. It's gonna take longer to get warmed up, you know, to raise your body temperature by one or two degrees and increase the range of movement. What I do, especially in the winter months when I train, I put two, sometimes three layers on. And even if I'm indoors, I'll put a woolly hat on to increase my body temperature and my muscle, uh, the heat in my muscles quicker. I can always, you know, take layers off as I'm warm, but I'll do anything to get warmer. I generally don't train in warm rooms. I'd rather be in a cold room and layer up and take those layers off. If I'm outside walking, trekking, climbing, I've got lots of thin layers on and the body starts to warm up as it traps the heating, so I become more flexible as I'm moving. But, okay, there's temperature. Um, let's look at, uh, there's a short one here, fashion. Okay, how can fashion affect, affect your, your flexibility? Well, get this, uh, female, women clients who constantly wear high heels find that the muscles of the lower limb, i.e. the gastric pneumius, the soleus and the perineals, they're the muscles of the calf, uh, adaptive, uh, adaptively shorten over a time. Yeah, when I was in, in the 80s and 90s, when I worked in London, a lot of the women that would work in the offices that I worked in would wear high heels. Um, all day for work, and they would wear them outside as well. Um, we used to call them um, Essex calves. These, you'd have all these women from parts of East London or, or, or Essex, and they would come to work, and they would always have big, chunky calves, and not because they were grossly overweight. Uh, it's because they were wearing high heels, so the ankle joint, the ankle joint would go into what we call plantar flexion, because the toes are now uh, lower than the heel, uh, so the ankle is pointing down, and they could be in those shoes for an eight hour day in the office and best part of an hour each way to work if they lived in different part of London. So they could be in those high heels for 10 hours on a working day, Monday to Friday. And of course in the 80s and the 90s, they'd probably be wearing them in the weekends as well. So high heels um, uh, on a woman are gonna force the ankle to go into what we call plantar flexion, toes lower than the heels, and it shortens the calf muscle. It essentially bunches it up and pushes it up it's not because they're working out like Arnie in his prime trying to get big calves, but there you go. Fashion can affect um, your body's physiology, uh, ladies, so uh, go easy on the high heels. Only for special nights out. All right, uh, hereditary issues. Okay, flexibility can be inherited, uh, can be an inherited characteristic as well as an acquired one. Some people are born with a naturally excessive range of movement. This can be uh, due to potential for injury and it can also be necessary to concentrate on strengthening the muscles uh, acting over the joint in, to, in order to increase stability. Oh, now, I've had clients that have got, um, you know, hypermobility, okay? Um, you talk about um, being double jointed or triple jointed or whatever, but hypermobility is when their bodies are so relaxed at the joint, okay, it makes them almost too mobile and susceptible to injury. And, and the, the, the key in those appointments is not to try to, to shorten the muscle or to try and make them less mobile is to actually strengthen the muscle. So strength training uh, with ranges of movement, lengthening and shortening the muscle uh, to strengthen it, excuse me, or going through static contractions, isometrics, but strengthen the, the body's musculoskeletal system in order to actually help protect uh, the joints, the ligaments, the tendons, the joints and the muscles. So if you're hypermobile, one of the best things you can do, apart from, you know, take up a sport, you know, you turn to golf or something, or something like that, or swimming, you're gonna be nice and mobile, but you've got to keep your body strong with some form of resistance training. I've had more than one client in the last two or three years that are hypermobile, and normally it manifests itself um, at the elbow or the hips, you know, not so much the toes or the fingers, but elbows and hips, um, sometimes knees, they might go into like a hyperextension more so. so. Okay, so um, we looked at temperature, we looked at fashion, we looked at hereditary. Um, what I would like to um, suggest to you that if um, you find yourself feeling tired in the morning and you've slept, you've got your normal seven hours that you need or six hours or eight hours, whatever it is you need, 
um, you've, uh, you've had your breakfast, you've had your coffee, you've had your shower, but you still feel tired, it may be you've not got enough blood flow through the body. So perhaps get out of bed 10, 15 minutes earlier if you're stuck for time and do some range of movement exercises in your kitchen, your dining room, your living room, your bedroom, your garden if it's warm enough out there and increase the range of movement in your body before you go to work. It'll get you to, it'll help you feel better. Especially if you've got to drive to work and you're sat in a car for upwards of half an hour to 45 minutes or even an hour, or you've got to sit on the train for a while. If you walk to work, that's great. You're gonna get blood flowing around your body, stand up nice and straight, gonna feel better. But most people nowadays that home, uh, work from home or work in offices, um, ordinarily they drive to work or they get a bus or a train to work and then they sit down all day. So their flexibility is poor all day and they get hip pain and back pain and neck pain. Um, so it doesn't take a lot of money to become flexible. You haven't got to have a special clothing. You don't have to have a trainer or a therapist. You can go on Google or on YouTube and look at some exercises. You know, you haven't got to be a martial artist or a dancer or a ball, or, or a ball sports athlete. You could be a little old lady, aged 80 years of age. You could be a grossly overweight guy from Hull or from Harrow age 35 and you can still increase your flexibility in order to make your body better stronger make it longer yeah um, you see these uh, sprinters in the Olympic Games and they pull up or footballers or basketball players or rugby players and they pull up with um, torn hamstrings well that hamstring may have been tight before they're playing um, or they you know some people tear you hear about bodybuilders uh, tearing quadriceps or tearing uh, biceps tendons, uh, excuse me, or the biceps, um, and it might be because they've deliberately got too much weight or poor form. It might be they're not flexible enough. So what I would say is to get better, get healthier. Um, as it's not always about your food, it's not always about your body weight, it's not always about your cardiovascular or your strength training or your posture. Sometimes the quickest one you can start is flexible. I would say um, get your shoulder blades to come up and pull them back, you know, retract yourself, um, move your neck left and right, yeah, rotate the wrists, the elbows and shoulders, it takes seconds to start doing it, practice some knee raises, some hip opening exercises, um, if you've got bad knees or a bad back, do, do a lot of standing up, you know, do a lot of your stretching movements standing up, you know, if you're good going onto the floor, use a mat, use a rug, anything soft so it's underneath your kneecaps because you don't want to get knee pain because you, you're on a hard surface, um, and, and hydrate as well. A little bit of water before you start doing flexibility. You want to hydrate the muscles, hydrate the body. Yeah. Take your body into extension as well. You know, you see people that do Pilates and yoga or Tai Chi. They use a lot of, they go into a lot of extension, you know, pulling their shoulder blades back, um, arching their back. That's okay. Make sure that you don't hold your breath as well. You shouldn't hold your breath while you're doing stretches. Don't believe any newfangled idea you see about um, breath holding. No, breathe, nice, relaxed breathing. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. You know, I myself at some point in the future will do um, something like Pilates or yoga or um, Tai Chi, one of the oldest uh, type of uh, body movement exercises in the world, just to improve my range of movement and my flexibility. For now, I train myself. But in the future, it could be this year, next year, five years from now, I'll actually go and, uh, go and work with a coach or a specialist just to improve that. If I return to golf after years of trekking and climbing and what have you, then I'm gonna to need to improve my flexibility again, my range of movement, not just to improve my game, but to decrease uh, the risk of injury and increase the chance of recovery if I was to get injured. So that's it today. That's a short one today. It's not too much rocket science for you. Remember that, become flexible. I think it was the world's greatest martial artist of all time, the most famous martial artist of all time, Bruce Lee. He used to say, become water, because water is flexible, pliable, malleable. It can adapt and change. So for those of you watching overseas, think about that. Water can get inside anywhere. It can move up, down, left and right. It can twist and turn. It's probably the most flexible compound other than uh, air. No, you can't compress water. That's the big difference between water and air. You can compress air, but you can't compress water. But water, like nature, finds a way. Water gets in gaps. It goes up, it down, left and right. It's a flexible, um, it's a flexible element. Not compressible, but flexible. So, become flexible. That's it, my name's Tristan Lowe. Uh, my podcast is called the Over 40s Fitness Podcast. 
and it's not necessarily for, the, for those of you over the age of 40. You could be 17, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, woman or man, young or old, short, tall, fat, thin, doesn't matter. Your body's the most prized possession that you've got. Not your car, not your house, not your jewelry, okay? Uh, your body is the most prized possession. So be flexible, look after it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.